Hey, this is Joe with Gray Bench Electronics. Today, we're gonna to crack open the Benson Germanium Buzz. So this is a new Germanium Fuzz pedal from Benson Amps. It is based on the Dallas Arbiter Fuzz Face. Has some additional features like a pickup simulator and most importantly, a temperature control or temperature regulation circuit. Uh, so we're gonna have a look inside. We're gonna see how that regulation is being done and talk a bit about why you might want to regulate germanium transistors temperature. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe and the notification bell. Let's get to work. All right, let's get started here. So this pedal here, uh, my uh, friend, has already taken it apart and done some testing on it and pulled the transistors out, tested those. If you want to see that information, you can head over to uh, freestompboxes.org and check out the thread there. Um, there's a more in-depth discussion on the, uh, the math behind the temperature circuit, so I'd recommend checking that out. Uh, so let's get into this thing here. So I want to keep this video from being super long. Uh, I'm not going to get into super technical detail over over the uh, the warming circuit because one, I'm not an engineer. Um, I would probably say something wrong if I tried to do that. And two, uh, time doesn't really allow it. Um, so I'm just going to do a general overview of how the the warming circuit works. Here. Okay, here's our board for the Benson Germanium Fuzz. Standard three position foot switch, uh, or I should say three pole double throw foot switch, and our PCB mounted potentiometers, DC jack, got a couple ICs here, little trim pot hiding down in there, and then a standard array of uh, carbon film resistors and film caps. And we got a couple. One, two little silicon transistors also in there. Oh, three transistors right there. So let's pop this off. What we have here is our two germanium transistors down in there. So just like the um, the boss, the tone bender, these are T05 transistors. I can read it there. It's marked T, uh, 2N527 SEL. I'm not familiar with SEL. Let's see. Uh, yeah, 2N527 on both of the transistors there. And then we have these two uh, resistors, carbon old carbon composition style resistors, uh, bridged over top the transistors with uh, like a paste, thermal paste. Um, I'm, I'm feigning ignorance a little bit because I've already seen inside this. I should also mention that when um, my friend took these apart, uh, the paste was originally a clear paste. Um, it's now this sort of gray paste, but it appears to be sort of a similar style to what you would put under like a um, like a CPU in a computer. Uh, it's basically just to help spread the uh, or increase the thermal mass of the the little bundle there um, to help spread the temperature around. Um, over in this corner, we got our two ICs. The ICs here. Uh, so this here is a Texas Instruments RC4558P, which is a extremely common standard dual op amp. And this chip here is a Texas Instruments LT1054IP, which is a voltage regulator or voltage. Um, well, in this case, it's being used as a a voltage inverter, it's giving us our negative supply for the PNP germanium transistors. Input output jacks, obviously, this square box is a, well, it's technically a transformer. If you look at the specs on this part number, it is a transformer. Uh, however, in this case, it's being just used as an inductor uh, to simulate the um, inductance of a guitar pickup. Uh, that's combined with the impedance and a couple other pieces here, as well as the uh, buffer, yes, a buffer um, going into the pedal 
So go in, buffer, then we go to our guitar pickup simulator, which the inductor here is part of, impedance, um, potentiometer there out to the fuzz circuit. So let's talk about how the temperature regulation circuit works here. Um, so we already looked and saw we have two carbon comp resistors sitting on top of the germanium transistors uh, with thermal paste. So the idea here, the concept, is that we want to raise, artificially raise the temperature of the germanium transistors in order to get the, the bias conditions where we want them to make the fuzz face sound right. Um, now that might sound kind of backwards to people because it's warmth or heat that causes germanium transistors or germanium fuzz to sound bad, right? If you have a germanium fuzz face and you put it out in the sun, try to play it, it gets farty, it doesn't make sound at all, or it makes squealy sounds, it's bad. We generally think of heat or increasing temperature as bad for germanium fuzzes. But in this case, there's careful selection of the uh, germanium transistors and careful adjustment of the trim pot here, as well as the correct resistors as part of the warming circuit that makes it such that the artificial temperature we are warming to, uh, which is going to be a temperature sim uh, similar to like a hot day in terms of ambient temperature, it's going to be equivalent to that so that the transistors sound right at that point. So that's the idea. We're warming up the transistors to make them sound right. Now, how exactly does it know what to do? Well, that's the circuit here that handles that. Um, so what's happening here and please stick through this. It's, it's, this is as technical as we're gonna get. The circuit here is sensing the collector voltage for Q3. It is sensing the voltage at the collector of the second transistor in the FUD face. It's Q3 because of this pedal, but um, it is the second transistor. We're, we're sensing the voltage there. Um, as the transistors uh, warm up, the collector voltage is going to increase. This is caused by a normal thing that happens for all transistors, which is that their current, your collector current will increase with temperature, but it's exacerbated for germaniums because of the property of germanium, the element. Um, but anyway, as the transistor warms up, the collector voltage will increase. Um, the circuit here has a voltage that is its, its threshold voltage. Once the collector current for the Q3 transistor or I should say the collector voltage, once that reaches a certain set voltage, the warming circuit then turns off. That will cause the transistors to now, assuming the ambient temperature is lower, it will, start, it will cause the transistors to start cooling down again because they're not being warmed. Once the transistor current, collector current falls below a certain value, I should say collector voltage, once that falls below that reference value of voltage, then the warming circuit will turn back on again starting to warm up the transistors again. So the, the transistors sort of go through a cycle of heat where they're being warmed up, warmed up, collector voltage hits that level, warming circuit turns off, there's a little bit of overshoot, and then it starts to fall back down. Once it passes below that threshold for collector voltage, then the warming circuit turns back on again, warms up the transistors again, and on we go. There's a limitation, as you might have noticed, that if whatever the ambient temperature is, if it exceeds, that temperature that is sort of the, the like stasis or um, um, I can't think of what I'm thinking of where it, it needs equilibrium for the transistor with ambient versus like artificial temperature. If it exceeds that, well, you're still gonna have problems. And we saw this happen with the versions of these pedals that came out in the black enclosure. That black enclosure absorbed more energy from light which caused it to heat up inside, which could on hot days exceed the the, regu the regulation temperature. That's, so the general idea here is we're warming up the transistors to get to a, cor a correct sounding level of warmth. If the um, transistors start to cool off, the uh, warming circuit will turn back on, warming up the transistors again. So the warming circuit holds the transistors at about a certain temperature to make them sound right. I should also mention the resistors here are not being used for their resistive properties per se. The point of these resistors is that they are essentially, they're the warming elements for the heater. Um, so all resistors are imperfect, meaning they're going to lose some amount of energy in the form of heat. Um, so that's how they're actually being used here. Uh, they are, uh, they're going to give off heat as current flows through them. Uh, this transistor is going to be part of that. 
That's why it's uh, an atypical package. It's meant to be able to dissipate a little more power. Um, so yeah, that's, it's an interesting way of doing it. You actually are just using resistors as heating elements. Um, that doesn't mean their resistance is arbitrary. It's not. 68 ohms, according to the rest of the circuit, must be the appropriate amount to provide the correct amount of warmth uh, for the specific setup here. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's interesting, the way that's being done. As far as build quality, this, everything looks great to me. Um, I did notice on the back as we were looking, um, you know, this solder joint doesn't look so great. Um, a couple solder joints I think could use a little more solder. Um, I don't see any cold joints. I don't see, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. We got a couple pinholes on these, but you know, it's a guitar pedal, it's not a satellite, so. Um, overall, that looks pretty good. The components are high quality. I appreciate that they went with the uh, the LC1054 chip, the linear technologies technology linear technologies chip. Um, this is a this is a better chip than the alternative, which is a, a Max uh, 1044, which has some um, has some uh, noise that can get into the audible range um so the the 1054 is a, is a better chip um and then this uh, this op amp's just part of the warming circuit um so there we go that is the benson germanium fuzz um let's uh, i hope i explained the warming circuit uh to uh not too complicated for people who don't really care and not to dull down for people who um are really into that like technical side. So actually before we reassemble the pedal, I wanted to do just a little test to just show proof of concept of how the warming circuit is working. The multimeter here is set up to read the collector voltage on the Q3 collector. Uh, important thing we wanna pay attention to here is how the meter is changing over time as the warming circuit is turning on and turning off. I wanna correct something I said earlier. I might've simplified it a little too much it's not simply a function of the collector current increasing uh, as temperature increases. That's true for transistors, that, that is the case. Um, but the fuzz phase is fairly complicated for DC analysis uh, because the base of Q3 uh, or Q2 in a fuzz phase, Q3 in this case, is tied to the collector of Q2. And so there's some current stealing happening there. Um, and I'm not technically gifted enough to explain it well. So I recommend, if you're interested in that, head over to electrosmash.com and check out their article on the fuzz phase. Uh, it is very informative and good. And yeah, if, you, if you're if you interested more in that uh, technical side, go check out that article. It's on uh, electrosmash.com. Um, here, we're just gonna be taking a look at the collector voltage and seeing how it changes as the temperature, as the transistors are warming up and cooling down. The finite number is not that important. Uh, in fact, what the numbers we're actually going to see are going to be actually slightly less than half the actual collector voltage. Um, and that's just because of where I'm tapping into the collector voltage to see it. Um, but again, the number doesn't matter. What matters is how it changes over time. Um, so when I power up the pedal, you're going to see the LED uh, start in orange. That means the warming circuit is on. We'll see the number increasing on the meter here. Uh, at a certain point, we'll reach a certain voltage. Uh, in this case, I think it's about like 1.8 volts. Uh, the LED will turn green, and then we will see the meter increase a tiny bit more, and then it'll start to fall again. After it falls down to a certain value, the LED will turn back to orange, indicating the warm circuit has turned back on. Uh, and then the number will continue to decrease um, through the cooling process, but then the warmth on the resistors will start warming the transistors back up. This number will start increasing again until we pass that voltage threshold around 1.8 volts, in which case the warming circuit will turn off and then we repeat the process. So enough talking, let's see it happen. Okay, so we started pretty low around 0.2 volts, but we're steadily climbing as the transistors are warming up uh, through the function of the uh, resistors, the current through the resistors. Uh, I also want to hopefully do this here, take a little temperature reading. Not sure. I'm going to focus there. That is the resistors. So my ambient temperature in here is around 70, 
degrees. So the resistors are definitely have they're dissipating power because they're warm, almost 80 degrees. All right, so we're about 1.4 volts. Like I said, it should flip around 1.8 volts or so. For warmer, we're 82. So the number we're seeing here, like I said, the finite number doesn't matter, but the number we're seeing, oh, here comes the flip. Wait for it. There it goes. It's about 1.84 volts. Little tiny increase just from residual heat. And then now that the warm circuit's off, the temperature is starting to fall, coming back down to ambient in the room. Collector voltage is reducing, and then in response to that, the warming circuit senses it and turns back on. It takes a second or two for the warming circuit to get the heat down into transistors, so we're still falling, but now that the heat is making it to the transistors, the collector voltage is coming back up. Um, so like I was saying, this number is corresponding to a collector voltage floating around 4 volts. Uh, which is just about right. That's half of your supply, which is in this case, eight volts. It's a little bit lower just because of how the um, the power and the protection diode are dropping the voltage a little bit. So yeah, so now the warming circuit is turned off, our temperature is falling, our collector voltage is falling, uh, and we pass that lower threshold about 1.82 volts, warming circuit turns back on, temperature is still falling, just because it takes a second for the heating uh, circuit to take effect. But now we're going to start climbing again. So I hope this uh, exemplifies the concept here that we are warming and cooling the transistors with the heating circuit, and that's having an effect on the collector voltage. Uh, and the collector voltage is moving up and down with the temperature. Okay, so let's put the pedal back together. We'll take our board here, pop a little foam piece back on there. Now with, uh, with all PCB mounted components here, you wanna be a little careful, um, especially with jacks like this. You are threading a, a metal nut into a plastic body and it's very easy to strip those out. So you don't wanna over tighten these. Um, however, you also want to pay attention to your DC jack because you can see here we have a PCB mounted DC jack and the tolerances here aren't super tight. That's just so manufacturing can be a little quicker. Um, but it would be possible to tighten all this stuff down and end up with the DC jack like half or at least partially obscured by the enclosure, which would make it not possible to insert a DC plug, which wouldn't be good. Um, so I'm going to leave, I'm going to put the hardware on, but I'm going to leave it loose. Uh, and I'm actually going to snug up the jack nuts here first uh, and making sure it's going to apply a little bit of pressure sideways on the PCB here a little more sturdy just to make sure as I tighten this it doesn't uh, obscure the jack you, again you don't want to over tighten these because it's just plastic None of the fasteners on pedals really have to be super tight. Um, you never want to really wrench on them. Just snug, just so they're not going to come undone. Our nuts are tight and our DC jack is still, we can still get in there, power the pedal. Okay, let's pop our back door on here. Go and just our knobs. Okay, there we go. There it is, Benson Germanium Fuzz. 
All right, so that is the Benson germanium fuzz. We had a look inside, looked at the temperature regulation circuit, talked about germanium transistors a little bit. Uh, if you enjoyed that video, please hit the like button. Appreciate that. Also, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos. Uh, if you have any other pedals that you want taken apart, uh, let me know in the comments or any questions. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching. I am Joe from Graybench Electronics.